States. They took everything from me. My family. I got nothing left. Oh, we back in the Low Key Cave, Keyshawn Nam's YouTube page, aka Mr. Low Key. We back with the Without Remorse review. Let me make that clear. Without remorse review. <laughs> it sounds like I kind of said it chopped up at first. My bad, man. And shout out to my subscribers, man. And if it seems like I ain't um, posted up a couple videos in a couple days, my bad, man. Like I said, sometimes it, it's, I'm going to say this. It's pretty good to take a break from social media sometimes. That's what I'm going to say. I feel like sometimes we all need to take a mental break from social media at times. And that's what I pretty much done. Not only that, I work. <laughs> like, I have a 9 to 5, and I'm also about to get, like, a second job. So, y'all going to have to bear with me. Like I said, I'm working on some things. I'm trying to get some stuff done. I'm a man. I'm a grinder. I'm a hustler. I do what I have to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I tell kids. I take care of my family. So, like I said, shout out to my subscribers. And shout out to everybody that's sticking through with me. This green screen right here. trying to, It's windy. I'm out here in my little thing, doing my thing. Hold on, y'all. Bear with me. All right. <laughs> like I said, man, I'm just getting tuned back in. But like I said, I ain't just trying to like uh, put my uh, life out there on the line or tell everybody my life story or nothing. It ain't nothing like that. Like I said, I'm just um, trying to stick with people who've been checking me out, who've been subscribing to my page, and let them know that um, if they coming through trying to check out some new or content or new updated videos and stuff, that I got you. I'm coming through. I got stuff that's coming. I'm going to have it coming through, but I'm just letting them know I work and I got stuff I got to do. And I do take a break from social media time. So shout out to all my subscribers doing all my viewers. But we are here for the Without Remorse Review. Excuse me, let me adjust my camera just a little bit, just a little bit. All right. <laughs> but we have those lines of revenge movies. You know the ones I'm talking about. My first revenge movie, as far as being every movie that has something to do with your wife getting killed, you know the wife or the kids getting killed, that would have been Steve Seagal's Hard to Kill. That was pretty much my first revenge movie. I loved and I actually enjoyed that movie a lot. I love that whole concept of the guy being beat down, tore down. You know, he being took out and he thinking he's dead, his family gone. And you you putting yourself in that position of what you would do if somebody did that to you. You know what I'm saying? As far as if somebody take your family away or if somebody, you know what I'm saying, came in your household and, I mean, and invaded your house, invaded your home where your family like they had it. Like, how would you respond to that? Of course, I mean, in reality, I don't know if we could go this route. <laughs> it depends. I don't know. You got the certain skills. Maybe you can. But as far as those type of movies, I definitely love them. And my first experience with this at a young age was watching Steven Seagal's Hard to Kill. You know, you had Steven Seagal where his wife got killed at the beginning. Um, spoil, no spoiler. I mean, that movie old as fuck. Like, that's like 1980-something, I think, if I'm not mistaken. If it ain't 1980, it's definitely 1990. If not 1990, 1989. But anyway, Steven Seagal's hard to kill. You pretty much got his wife getting killed. And he pretty much in a coma for like eight years. And, you know, we've had these movies before. But he's pretty much in a coma for like eight years. Maybe not even that long. Maybe for like four or five years. It's in, some, it's in between some years, definitely. But he's pretty much in a coma. And he pretty much comes out of this coma thinking his wife and his son has been killed. Because he has a child, too, that was in a home when this whole massacre happened. But anyway, we had those type of movies where we've seen before. I can name hard, some of my favorites. I'm going to name some of my favorites. Your revenge movies, and I want to give my take of some of my favorite revenge movies in this category as far as, you know, the wife getting killed or the wife and the child getting killed. My favorites is, of course, Hard to Kill, Steven Seagal. Uh, I would say A Man Apart with Vin Diesel. You know, you already know that one. Um, the, of course, The Punisher which was the one with Thomas Jane. I actually enjoyed that movie a lot with Thomas Jane. I just feel like it shouldn't have been a Punisher movie. I feel like if it would have been a, a different movie with a different name or something, I feel like it would have been a better movie. But having that Punisher and the people going to the comics or whatnot, I think that what damaged that movie as far as not only box office, but just the fan thing. I think it's kind of a cult classic as far as the whole Thomas Jane, his acting with it, but... Those are some of my favorite ones. I'm hoping, I'm thinking I'm not forgetting none as far as like the movies I like like that. Um, and this one is one I'm really enjoying too. Um, I can't, 
Can I put Sicario in that? Because you know, at the end of Sicario, you know, the, everything with Benicio Del Toro's character, I ain't even going to go on all that. <laughs> That's for another day. But anyway, like I said, Hard to Kill, A Man Apart, um, The Punisher. I feel like those kind of movies, you know, had a wife getting killed, the revenge movies. I really enjoy those movies. Now, with, with um, coming with this movie without remorse, coming into this movie, I have my issue, not with this, just this movie, but these type of movies my issue is i feel like we don't get enough with the wife the characters that's getting killed off i feel like we don't get enough with those characters to care about them for us to be engaged with these characters going after these people who did do this to them who took away their loved ones that's my only gripe with them i still end up enjoying it i mean even going to um them doing the damage they do, the violence that comes in because all, if, yeah, let me think, yeah, all of these movies are rated R type movies and they have to be because you want to see them take all that anger out from them seeing their loved one get shot and killed in some of the most gruesome ways, whether it's their wife getting killed while she's pregnant without remorse or even Vin Diesel's um, in The Man Apart with his wife getting killed and she's laying in the bed, they both getting shot or whatnot, but just in those veins and that type of revenge movie, you definitely, I feel like, has to be rated R. Just to see the violence we want to see, being an audience member and seeing these people, we want to see exact this revenge on these type of people. So, with this movie, though, I just feel like, like the other revenge movies, we just don't get enough with the wife. We, I want to get engaged with this couple a little bit. I don't feel like you have to do a whole 45-minute segment, but... Let's get into some family oriented things. Let's, I mean, let's kind of be caught off guard. Let's make this wife maybe even um, somewhat like have some kind of a skill sort similar to her husband's in some type of sort of way. Like, I feel like it'll get us more engaged and made us care more about not only the sibling that the um, man or woman end up losing, but we end up getting more engaged with them going after this person. I'll give you even another example. It was another movie I think a lot of people maybe haven't, didn't see. I don't know if it got a lot of um, critical acclaim, but Jodie Foster, The Brave One. If you haven't seen it, that's a movie where Jodie Foster and her boyfriend are like walking in a, a park or whatnot, and they get jumped and beat up, and her husband, I mean, the boyfriend ends up dying from it, and she goes out seeking revenge, and she ends up doing, like, some Punisher type-ish, going after, like, just bad people in the neighborhood or whatnot whatsoever, but anyway, just in that vein, I feel like we kind of got um, some type of connection with her and her husband, I feel like we kind of cared about her husband in that situation, so I just feel like the movies, these type of movies, we need to get better understanding of the sibling not the sibling well yeah the sibling and the significant other the woman or the man that you are losing to that violence we, i want to get to know them better so i can care more and i want to even be more passionate with you going after your revenge either way though when like i said man when you kill a woman or a child in these type of movies like we you want to go get it in either way because that's off limits no women no kids <laughs> you know what i'm saying but in these type of movies, like I said, in this um, certain movie, we just jump straight into it. Like, it's straight up action. We jump into Michael Joy Michael B. Jordan and his team, and they on this type of mission or whatnot. And, of course, already in these type of movies, you also have the whole government cover-up set up and all that type of shit. And we have that right at the beginning of this movie. I mean, this movie pretty much is trying to force you to hate somebody. Like, they straight up trying to force you to hate this one character. And it's like, okay, I see what y'all doing already. Y'all want me to hate this motherfucker so bad, and I'm already like, yeah, this gotta be somebody. He, he up to some shit. He up to some shady shit. And, of course, and like, like I always do my reviews, I give people time to watch them or whatnot. Like, I'm doing this on a Monday, and this movie came out Friday, so this is a spoiler review, spoiler review, spoiler review. But... You have this guy, and I, I can't even remember the guy's name. Like I said, these characters ain't flushed out. Let's just be straight up. These, none of these characters are really flushed out. I mean, even Michael B. Jordan's team, like, I started forgetting, like, damn, oh, he looked like, oh, boy, they looked the same. So I didn't even know when they started knocking off his team at the beginning of the movie. I'm like, damn, we didn't even get to know this team, really. So I'm like, I mean, all right. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, man. And shout out to Charlotte. Charlotte, North Carolina was in the movie. I don't know if it's really the Charlotte location, but they had a scene where this dude, an army dude, is in Charlotte, North Carolina. It didn't end good, but it was in Charlotte. But 
Yeah, man, when they start knocking off his team, it's like, we don't even know these people, man. And some of these people was looking alike, I'm telling you. But the way they were getting knocked off was like, damn. One dude got ran over straight up by a van in front of his daughter, bro. Like, the shit was brutal. And one nigga is in traffic, and you know some shit about to pop off. The motherfucker just hop out the back of, back of a van and just splat his ass like, bam, bam, bam. But one thing I want to say also is, if you watch my channel, as far as the whole um, concept of Tom Clancy, this shit does play somewhat like a video game, like straight up. Like, I'm right now playing Tom Clancy's um, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. And I'm telling you straight up, nigga, I'm, I'm, I'm there feeling like, this, nigga, I am Michael B. Jordan. This me right here on this game. <laughs> but shout out to Tom Clancy and his games, man, because I was recently playing Ghost Recon Wildlands. So if you watch my channel, check out some of those video game um, gameplay that I do for Ghost Recon Breakpoint and Ghost Recon Wildlands. But me playing those games when i was watching these scenes at the beginning when they doing the whole like seal six shit and they walking in that motherfucker and they got the whole night vision shit going on and everything like i'm like oh shit this shit is straight up the video game like i feel like i'm straight up playing the game right now and that's what it felt like and there was some real straight up good scenes man i don't care what no i feel like i hear a lot of people saying like oh just action this they taking it back 90s action i don't feel like that um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm skipping ahead or doing anything, but I'm a, I ain't gonna skip ahead. What I'm gonna say is, the gunfight scenes in this movie, I enjoyed. I feel like they really did some good dynamic things with the gunfighting scenes in this, especially that ending. I don't care what nobody say. This was not no John Wick type of shit. Michael Jordan was getting fucked up. He was getting hurt. Like, he wasn't just goddamn whooping people ass, shooting everybody in the head, and just walking out. He went through some shit, and not only that, he was prepared pretty much about to die. <laughs> like, the nigga did some... It, it showed how not only he was a strategizer, but the way he could maneuver in situations to get out of them, even if he's outnumbered. And that's what I really enjoyed with those situations, because, to be honest... It ain't really no spoilers in this movie or nothing. It's, I mean, it's a straightforward movie. Dude is on a mission. It's a government setup. It's got people trying to get over on him. Government officials. He finds out the setup. I mean, you pretty much know what you're getting if you've seen these type of movies. And don't tell me you haven't. The thing I enjoyed doing, I feel like they done different with this movie, is the way they, they put kind of that intensity they don't put in other revenge movies. I feel like some shit can happen to Michael B. Jordan in this movie. Straight up, even though I already know they trying to do like a franchise with this, but straight up, even if I didn't get characters flushed out, I'm going to go again to that, um, particular to the ending where they get into, they get, um, the, um, airplane blows up and they end up falling in the ocean or whatnot and they get up to this building or whatnot and they got the sniper shooting in that motherfucker and they hitting one of his team members in the leg. That was an intense scene for me. Even if I didn't know these characters, I wanted them to make it out. I wanted them to get out of this situation. And the shit was just looking crazy. The sound, it took me back to Michael Mann's heat with the sound from the guns, especially those sniper rifles. Did you hear the, the vibration of them shits when they was bringing, especially you watching this shit on 4K, you got the speakers or whatnot. I wasn't even watching it on the speakers or whatnot. I had my shit on the regular TV and I'm still listening to this shit like, boom! The way the sniper rifles sound, boom! That's where you put you in that, not only the game, but they put you in that real um, scenario where you in a situation like you in a um, whole black ops type situation because they was in a situation where they had to go into Russia where they weren't even supposed to be there. They weren't supposed to leave no evidence of the U.S. being there for the main reason that they had certain individuals come on U.S. soil. But like I said, I ain't about to go in there. Like I said, you know the whole conspiracy government set up whatnot. My main thing with this movie was that I really enjoyed the action. I ain't going to even lie. I didn't enjoy the story too much. I mean, I felt like I knew what was going on pretty much because I've seen these type of movies before. But action, I enjoyed it. The fighting scene, I enjoyed the shooting scenes more than the fighting because I feel like the fighting scenes, I've think seen this shit before. I've seen this. Um, John Wick, like I said, I got to keep going back to John Wick. John Wick is setting a category that you're going to have to step your level game up. Not only a fighting, shooting, and action, man. You're going to have to step up. You cannot do this regular action shit in these movies no more. But with this type of movie and it being a Tom Clancy property, I feel like they did the elements that went along with it as far as it being like that army type ish. You know, they going in, the way they was holding their guns, the way they was shooting their guns, and the way they was like a whole team thing. That's the part I really actually enjoy. And that's why I said I give this movie more credit for the action. 
I mean, not particularly as far as the story or whatnot. Because, like I said, we didn't get characters fleshed out enough. I did enjoy... One thing I got to say, another complaint. I wanted more from the main girl character, Michael B. Jordan's um, lead captain or lead sergeant or whatnot. You know, the girl that was over the whole team. I wanted more for her. I thought she was going to, like, fuck some people up. I was thinking she was going to be in there, like, jacking people up. And she did a couple things, but... I wanted more from her. I feel like she could. She was supposed to be. She was like the next main character, the Michael B. Jordan's character. I mean, she was a leader in her own form and fashion. I mean, she was the damn leader of that team. She was at a point where she didn't even want Michael B. Jordan to go because she didn't even know if he was right in the head yet. But just seeing the elements and everything they did, I wish we could have got a lot more with her. I feel like I didn't want that whole have to save her and whatnot. Even though it ended up being where she ended up taking care of business and Michael B. Jordan got over there right at the exact time where she ended up fucking somebody up anyway. So I did end up enjoying that and enjoying her doing that type of thing and seeing her elevate her character a little bit more. She's another character I feel like that just wasn't flushed out. Like I said, I can't even kind of remember their names in this movie. I know he, um, as far as him, you know, because it's coming up from the game or whatnot. Well, not the game, but the movies or whatnot. But as far as this being a Tom Clancy property, I feel like they stayed true to the element with the action and even with the whole setup, the um, government setup or whatnot. Like I said, I'm right now, I'm playing Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and it's got a whole little different up thing going on with drones or whatnot. So I did enjoy this, and I can go back and watch this for the action or whatnot, because like I said, I enjoy these type of movies. Revenge plus good action, like I'm all there for it. And one thing I really enjoyed with this movie was they didn't make Michael B. Jordan look like he was like in, like invincible. If he got hurt in moments. Like he was straight up, you know, he was going to make it out at the end, even though, you, like I said, they trying to build a franchise with this. But still, I really enjoyed this, man. So let me know if y'all looking forward to them trying to make a franchise out of this. Or y'all look forward to a sequel from this. Um, how did y'all feel about the action in this like I did about the action in this? Hit that like button. Hit that um, subscribe button. Shout out to all my subscribers, man. And shout out to my new subscriber. I just seen you subscribe today. I can't remember your name right now. I'm going to go back and check it out. But, man, shout out to you, man. And shout out to everybody viewing my videos, man. It's much appreciated, man. They know exactly where we've been.